G'day, Dave the Train Guy here from The Hobby Man by Hearns. And today we're gonna to do something rather exciting. Uh, as the effects of COVID are slowly wearing away and there's a lot of new exciting releases and particularly one from SDS Models who have got to be congratulated for bringing out something a little bit different for a change being a South Australian model and the South Australian 900 as you probably would have worked out from the title. But anyway, here it is. Now these particular diesels are sort of a, a groundbreaking diesel in the day because they were the first of the streamlined locos. Entering service in 1951, they were ahead of uh, a lot of other uh, states in the terms of bringing uh, heavy mainline power to the state government systems they served. Predominantly, uh, the Commonwealth Railways brought out their GM in 1951, around about the same time, but I think the South Australians with their 900 came out a little bit in front of them and Victoria didn't have a mainline diesel until 1952 being the B class and I think Tasmania might be the winner at, in 1950 for bringing out the X class as their first mainline uh, diesel locomotive but certainly not on the mainline um, on the main land sorry but anyway so our South Australian friends our crow eaters I uh, can rejoice in, in the fact that someone's actually finally brought out a ready-to-run loco, which has been a long time coming. And for our overseas viewers, uh, when I refer to crow eaters, that's actually the native bird of South Australia, which is a shrike, but a bit more on that later. But anyway, we're not a biological uh, flora channel. We're a model train channel. But anyway, on with the unboxing. Okay, as you probably saw me fiddling around with the box, that's a rather, you know, snazzy looking silver box no big deal with a bit of an illustration uh, it comes with the usual ice cube packaging nicely foam lined good for transportation all right as here we go now the first impressions on seeing this model is like wow it is really is an awesome looking loco and if you've ever seen the real thing at the port dock uh, or the national railway museum in adelaide you can't help but being impressed they are just a huge big long diesel i think they came in at around about 121 tons i may be wrong on that and i think their horsepower was around about 1760 so for the day they were you know a bit of a beast and i think that was actually their nickname was magnificent beast but you can't help but being taken in by the American styling of it. It's obviously very much inspired by Alco. But surprisingly enough, uh, for the day, they were designed in-house by the South Australian uh, State Government Railways, the SAR, S-A-R, and at the Inglington, Islington Railway Workshops. So that was sort of rather unique in the fact that most uh, rail operators or state rail operators had their locomotives built by another party and gave up on building their own in-house locos but anyway just looking at it this one here is uh 900 and it's named lady nori now i don't know if you can pick that up on the camera i'll just take it up a little bit nah but anyway yeah it was named after the the wife of the governor of south australia at the time and obviously the south australians were very proud of their new locos and were out there flaunting it so this particular version um Obviously, it's got South Australian Railways written on the side, which disappeared not long after, I believe, once they got into service. But, and and I just as uh, what I was talking about before for our overseas viewers, there's the Shrike, which is essentially a, a magpie. I'm probably going to be stoned to death for that. And you've got some nice added on detail. You've got a little door handle. You've got handrails, MU uh, sockets. We have air hoses. On this side, we have a staff exchanger. That's nicely represented. Big bulky bogies. Now these bogies were an AIA bogey. So anyone who's not familiar with that term, it means this axle drove, this axle drove, but the middle one was just a carrier axle, a dead axle, a non-powered axle. And these bogies are really nicely represented because it actually does emphasize the size of the thing in real life. And we have got some stiffeners up here. Uh, yeah, there you can just see it at that angle. 
they're all painted in a sort of a lime sort of undercoat green you've got some nice mesh panels up the back here and just turning to the back we have the rear end again so we've got a working light at the back and i didn't mention too that there's a working light to the front as well and again you've got a, a bit of collection of hoses air hoses and emu hoses and just looking along the front or from the front to the back on the top we've got some horns and again some nice nice representations of fans you can actually see the fan below the mesh so they're really going to be congratulated on this it's a really lovely model and even if you're not a south australian modeler you can't help but be sucked in by getting one of these well that's the dc version and unfortunately we don't have a dcc sound version here today uh so that might be one for another video next week uh, but the but i can assure you uh, after listening to it it actually does sound like an authentic english electric prime mover and the horn sounds correct to me only because i've seen it on videos when they were in service on top of that you get a fairly extensive parts list i know we've got a bit of background glare there so if you ever break anything or damage anything and another point i didn't make out but you can't see it on the actual model itself is it comes with a cab interior but no crew so if you ever want to super detail it uh you can and it will take a 21 pin decoder if you just want to run it as purely as a dcc model or you can put a uh, esu lock sound uh sound decoder when they become available moving along we have another variation of it or oh, actually we've got a couple of variations in store the other ones we have are uh, got a and r on them as when the south australian railways were taken over by the federal government to try to form a and r but the one we don't have is the green and yellow fictitious version the an version which are in very short supply now the second variant i'm showing you as is as how the logo would have appeared in the 1960s so it's still got the nice shiny metallic -y, sort of like stainless steel type paneling along the side here except the, the silver roof's gone and the uh, rather fancy south australian railways has been painted out just to become uh sort of a sort of a tuscan sort of a ready oxide color and again we have the famous shrike i'll have to put a picture up just to show you what a shrike looks like so it's a really nice touch so there you have it a, again a really stylish looking unit a sort of a historical unit and the first of the streamliners on the mainland of australia so if you want to get a piece of this or get one i'd say get in quick uh we don't want to hear any sad stories about you missed out or you couldn't get it or we sold out so they are selling well and they are, have proven to be extremely popular especially the class leader lady nori so if you want one all i can say is get in fast anyway all orders over a hundred dollars are freight free throughout australia even to south australia and there you have it so okay until next time and we may even come up with a video just to show you just what it sounds like when it's running with sound all right until next time happy modeling until then bye